peace is a term that you hear often in church. When we gather, the first thing that we do is shake hands and share the peace of the Lord. After the sermon, we wish you the peace of God. Right before we take Holy Communion, the pastor says, The peace of the Lord be with you always. As we sing the Nuke Dominus, we ask that God would let us depart in peace. It's that same peace that Jesus wishes to the disciples three times in our reading today. For as much as we talk about it, and as much as Jesus says it, surely this peace must be very important. So today, our sermon will be all about peace. I'm not talking about world peace or the stopping of all conflict. Instead, we'll learn about inner peace. In the Hebrew, it's the word shalom, and it signifies wholeness, fullness, and completion. In the Greek, it's the word erene, and it has the connotation of a state of well-being, harmony, and contentment. This is a type of peace that everyone in the world is always seeking. Yet, without the gospel, it's rather elusive. Though it's impossible for us to find peace on our own, God wishes us this peace. And he died on the cross and rose from the dead to make it happen. Now he says to the disciples, and he says to you and me, peace be with you. Indeed, we are now able to have this peace of God because Jesus gives us eternal life in his name. May we feel this peace of the Lord as we hear the sermon today. The gospel text begins on the evening of Jesus' resurrection. The disciples were in the upper room where the doors were locked for fear of the Jews. At that moment, the disciples were very much lacking peace. Instead of wholeness, they had emptiness. Their leader, their Lord, was died and buried. Instead of well-being, harmony, and contentment, they were filled with doubt and worry. They were lost, weary, and very sad. Instead of fullness and completion, they were filled with fear. If the Jewish leaders had crucified Jesus, might they be next? Can't you and I identify with these disciples to some extent? Haven't we all felt a lack of peace in our lives at times? Indeed, apart from Christ, true peace is impossible to find. And even though we have Christ, often in our sinfulness, we reject the peace that he gives. Instead of wholeness, we often feel emptiness. Perhaps it's because you're lonely, your career isn't fulfilling, or you deeply covet something that you cannot have. Certainly, we have all felt this emptiness, and we so often try to fill it with the lusts of our eyes, the cravings of our stomachs, and the desire for any number of the world's pleasures. Yet, these pleasures are short-lived, and soon that emptiness returns. Instead of well-being, harmony, and contentment, we, like the disciples, are often filled with doubt and worry. We worry about so many things, money, family, grades, careers, friendships, relationships, the future, the past, and the present. For most of us, this life is one of constant worry. Yet the funny thing is, 
It seems like the more we have, more money, more insurance, more security, more safety, the more we tend to worry. The very things that we accrue to try to quell our worries actually bring us more. When we foolishly put our trust in the things of this world instead of in God, we lack peace. Instead of fullness and completion, we, like the disciples, are often filled with fear. Have you ever been afraid that you wouldn't measure up to the standards of someone else? Have you ever been afraid of a new situation? Have you ever been afraid for your reputation? These fears arise when we don't find our identity in Christ, but we find it in ourselves. When we make ourselves the first priority and not Jesus. A sin that we're all prone to commit. Have you ever been afraid of death? This, of course, is the ultimate fear. Most try not to think about it, to fill their lives with, lives with so much busyness or pleasure that they won't have to ponder it, but we all die. For the world, it's such a great unknown, such a great bringer of fear, and it's the ultimate source of humankind's lack of inner peace. We may try to hide it, to not think about it, to push it away, but apart from Christ, there is certainly no such thing as peace. And God knows this. God knows that since the fall into sin, his creation has lacked peace. At that moment of sin, we are cut off from God, the only true source of peace. And we are condemned to death and hell, a fate that looms over us and robs us of peace. Yet God loves us so much that he wanted to reconnect us with himself and he wanted to deliver us from death and hell. And he wanted us to have true peace once again. So the risen Jesus entered the locked room that the disciples were in and said to them, peace be with you. These were not empty words. From the very next moment, Jesus displayed the reason for that peace. The text says, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. With that action, Jesus showed them, and he still shows us the reason that we can have peace. His hands and his side were proof of his crucifixion, proof that he suffered and died. This gives us peace because on the cross, he took all of the sin that deprived us of true peace and he paid the price to forgive it. It was those sins that had cut us off from God and deprived us of the true peace that he gives. But now by the blood of Jesus, these sins are forgiven. We are no longer cut off from God. And once again, we have his peace. Paul writes in Ephesians, for he himself is our peace who has made us both one and broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility, reconciling us to God in one body through the cross. Allow me to read from our gospel again. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Luke adds the following details to this same story. Jesus said, Touch me and see, 
For a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. Not only does Jesus show them that he was crucified, but he also proves that he was resurrected. Because of this, we can have peace. The greatest robber of peace that we all face is death. Yet by his resurrection, Jesus defeated death so that we can have eternal life. John writes at the end of our text, these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Jesus showed the disciples that he was bodily risen. And John wrote it down to prove to us that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is God, and that he rose from the dead. Now through his word, we may believe. And when we believe it, when we trust it and have faith in it, then we have eternal life. And when we have eternal life, we no longer fear death. Then we have peace. So Jesus tells them and us again, peace be with you. And we see that they do have peace. John says, then seeing the Lord, the disciples rejoiced. Rejoicing is an action that can only be undertook when one is at peace. In an instant, these disciples went from emptiness, doubtfulness, and fearfulness to peace and rejoicing. What brought about such a change? Seeing their crucified and risen Lord. In fact, the peace they now possessed was so great that we read in Acts that their fear had not only turned to rejoicing, but to absolute boldness. When the Jewish community commanded them to stop teaching about Jesus, these once fearful disciples boldly state, we must obey God rather than men. Then, every day, in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ, even though they were under great threats from the Jewish council. How did they go from having so much fear that they locked the doors to a few months later putting their lives on the line every single day? They saw the crucified and risen Jesus. He gave them peace because he forgave their sins and reunited them with God. He defeated death and assured them that they would also have a resurrection. They had peace because all of the sudden, the inadequacies of this life and the fear of death no longer mattered, for they were assured of a full, complete, perfect, eternal life in paradise. And we have this same promise from Christ. Therefore, we can have this same peace. Peter writes in our epistle, according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. This world will never give us true inner peace. Its worries are many. Its disappointments are numerous. Its pleasures are short-lived. It leaves us empty, unfulfilled, incomplete, 
and ultimately afraid of our impending, looming death. But Jesus says, in me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. We can have true inner peace because this world is not the end all be all. While it's not enough, we have Jesus and he is enough. When we feel lonely, Jesus says, peace be with you for I am with you. When we feel inadequate, Jesus says, peace be with you. You're so valuable that I gave my life for you. When we feel unfulfilled, Jesus says, peace be with you. I am all you need. When we worry, Jesus says, peace be with you. I'll take care of you. When we fear death, Jesus says, peace be with you. I died to forgive your sins and I rose to defeat death that you may have eternal life.